morning. I'm Pastor Allen. I'd like to welcome you to our online video Bible study for Sunday morning, January 24th. And I hope that you'll follow along in your Bible or Bible app or on your tablet. And if you feel that you would like to teach a lesson as a, as a guest teacher, we'd love to have you uh, teach a lesson. All you have to do is get a hold of me and let me know and we'll get you a copy of the lesson and we'll get it recorded and ready to go for Sunday morning. So I'm glad to see everybody here on this cold, cold Sunday morning. And, uh, but I hope that you're, you're warm and you have a nice cup of coffee or tea or hot chocolate and, uh, and that you, you follow along for the, the lesson. And don't forget, this morning at 10.10 a.m., we will have live worship and a message here on YouTube and Facebook and also in person in the church. Well, today's lesson is the opposite of last week's lesson. Last week's lesson was so, so clear and simple, there was only two parts to it. It was easy to understand. Well, today's lesson has, has three parts, and most of it takes place in chapter 17 in parts and verses that we're not reading. And so it gets a little complex. There's, there's some theology, there's some reasons why Jesus did this, and Bible scholars love to look at it and, and get into the little minutiae and the little parts of it and, and just kind of dig into theology and the theological implications, which is great. The point here for me is how do we apply the Bible to our lives? How is it useful for us? I mean, we can, we can learn about the theology and the background and everything, but you know what? At the end of the day, if it doesn't help us to live better lives, if it doesn't help us to be better Christians, better Christ followers, then it's not really that good for us. So we'll leave all the uh, theological implications and minutia and fine points to the theologians. And we'll look at today's lesson, which is in John 17, verses 14 through 24. And the most important verse out of this lesson this morning is taken from verse 20. And Jesus says, my prayer is not for them alone, meaning the disciples. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. So Jesus is praying for not only for his disciples, but he's praying for us and those of us who become believers through God's word, God's message. One of the great things that we see about Jesus, something that we can apply to our lives, is that Jesus had endless patience. I wish I, wish I had more patience, but Jesus showed us endless patience. How many times did he have to back up and explain or reteach his disciples the same lessons over and over. We, we see this many times in the, in the Gospels. How often do we need the same lessons retaught? In John 17, we also see the perfect love of Jesus, along with his patience, because he always loved his disciples no matter the mistakes they made, no matter the character failings that they had. Remember that the next time that you fail or that you make a mistake, Jesus loves us even though those things happen to us, even though we make mistakes. 
even though we fail, Jesus still loves us. And we're going to see we're going to see some of that in in our worship and message this morning. Also, as we look at uh, as we look at Jesus again in the lesson, the twelve men that Jesus chose had all kinds of weaknesses. Simon Peter, who was the leader of the group, he spoke too quickly. He listened too little. He didn't always reason things out very well. Two others, James and John, had selfish ambitions. Judas, the one with the most business ability, was dishonest, stole from the treasury, became disappointed, and betrayed Jesus. Still, these were the ones that Jesus chose, and he loved them to the very end. And important for us, Jesus prayed for them, and Jesus prays for us as well. Now, this week's lesson takes place in the upper room, where Jesus had just eaten the Passover meal, the last Passover meal that he'll eat with the disciples, and the next day he would be crucified on the cross. And Jesus warned them that they would suffer persecution, but once he departed this earth, he would send a comforter, the Holy Spirit, to go along with them. And while they were in the upper room, Jesus spoke of his death, his resurrection, and his second coming. The first verses, verses 1 through 5, Jesus prays for himself in relation to God the Father. And then he prays for his disciples in verses 6 through 13. And we pick up the lesson in verse 14 as Jesus continues to pray for his disciples, beginning in verse 14. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. And so Jesus gave his disciples the word, the word of God, his word, through teaching and example. And they in turn taught others, and God, through the Holy Spirit, wrote down the words of Jesus for us to follow, for us to learn, and for us to teach others. And this is what all of Jesus' ministry has been about up to this point. Now, the world hated Jesus. And the very next day, the disciples would see how much the world hated Jesus. Even though they had difficulty understanding it, this was part of God's plan. Jesus was not of the world. And the disciples, when they believed, were not part of the world. And when we believe, we also become part of the heavenly kingdom. And we are not part of this world anymore, but we're just living in it. Now remember, God loves us in the world so much, that's why he sent Jesus to die for our sins, because of that love. Now verse 15, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but you protect them from the evil one. See, the disciples wanted to be wherever Jesus was. And that's a good thing. But soon, Jesus was leaving the world, and they would not be able to follow him. They were going to remain in the world, and Jesus asked that they be protected from the evil one, the devil. Now, as believers, we'll still have trouble, we'll still have pain, but we're also protected by the Holy Spirit, just as the apostles were. Verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of it. 
course, we know Jesus was not of this world. He was sent to earth as a baby. And we are not part of this world if we become followers of Jesus. The thing is, Jesus was never of this world. He came from God. Now, our uniqueness comes from heaven. And it is because of faith, the disciples and us belong to the kingdom of God, not to the world system. And like Jesus' disciples, we have been sent out into the world not to be removed by it, but to influence it. And then verse 17, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. To sanctify or to make holy means to set apart for God's use. It means God is the one that makes us holy. And so we are to be separated from the values and desires of the world. And we need to show the mind of God through his word. And simply put, this means we are to become more and more like Jesus each passing day. And then verses 18 and 19. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, so that they too may be truly sanctified. Jesus' mission was always to come into our world, sent by the Father, and so it's the same for us. We are to go into the world. Why? To help do the work that Jesus began on the earth. This is the place for Jesus and us to work because we will rest in heaven. And just as Jesus set himself apart, I sanctify myself, he said, to do God's will, which meant heading to the cross. We are sanctified to do God's work as Jesus calls us to many different parts of it. It means we have been called by God to be his holy people. And in verse 20, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. See, future believers are the ones that Jesus said, which shall believe on me or in me through their message. Jesus not only prayed for his present disciples, but he also prayed for all future disciples or believers in Jesus Christ. This includes you and I and many others who are still yet to believe through God's word, the disciples' words, which means the words written by the Holy Spirit and preached by Jesus' disciples. Verse 21, it says that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Jesus prayed that all of them, believers, all of them may be one. And these words refer to Jesus, his disciples, and all again, all who come to believe in Jesus through the future in the future through his preaching. And Jesus prayed for the unity or the coming together of all believers to be just like the relationship that he had between himself and the Father when he said, just as you are in me and I am in you. So believers are to have unity, just as God and Jesus had unity. Verse 22, I have given them the glory you gave me that they may be one as we are one. And so Jesus is continuing to pray for the unity of all the believers. 
Jesus revealed the glory of the Father. In other words, we know what God the Father is like because of Jesus. And he showed us that while he was here on earth doing and saying exactly what God the Father wanted him to say and do. And now in his prayer, Jesus declares that he had given his disciples the same glory of presenting to the world who and what God is. That's our task now. We are to present who and what God is to the world. Verse 23, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. First, Jesus said, by unity, the world will know God sent Jesus. And second, the world will know that God the Father loves them just as much as he loves Jesus. And as we remain in the love of God, the world will recognize that God has sent him, Jesus Christ. Verse 24, Father, I want those you have given to me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you have loved me before the creation of the world. And so Jesus makes another request to the Father that those that God has given to him have the chance to be where he is and to see his glory, meaning the promise of heaven. And he asks this out of the love that the Father has for him even before the creation of the world. And so the final place for believers shall be in heaven with God the Father and Jesus. What a great prayer. What a great promise. And so the, the great lesson that we see here is Jesus prayed for himself, then he prayed for his disciples, and then he prayed for us. What an encouragement this would have been, what an encouraging prayer this would have been to the disciples. Jesus prayed about their security, their joy, their unity, and their future glory. And then the good news for us, Jesus also prayed for all future believers, including us today so that we would know what he has done for us and given to us and all that he will do for us when we get to heaven. Great prayer. It's something that we can model, we can teach, and something that we can do for ourselves and churches and future believers. Let us pray. Father, help us to love one another as you love us so that the world may see you working through us. May we be Jesus' hands and feet in the world today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great Sunday. Hope to see you back here at 1010 a.m. or here at church for our message and worship.